Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Adam RPG with me, Bring It On. Off camera, I mapped out the southwest portion of the Dead City. There's nothing down there besides bandits and shadows. So I'm confident in saying that I have discovered all of the locations within the Dead City as of the 1.1 update. And there are quite a few of them. Anyway, let's enter the department store. See if we can find out what happened to Jerky. See if we can't find any clues. Now before we find out who the killer is, if we even get to find out who the killer is, I'm gonna put my theory out there. I think that it is Kurds or Curtis, I'm gonna call him Curtis. Uh, the guy in charge of the stalker base. For a few reasons. Uh, the first being that he is in a position of authority over the detective. And so he would know what the detective knows in regards to the murder, which was indicated by the detective in the last episode. So he would have known that the detective was following Jerky out to the uh, Dead City and would have been able to strike when they were separated. Also, the detective said that he thinks that the woodpecker has help and Curtis always has that bodyguard nearby. So that would be the help that the woodpecker has. He has a, uh, a bodyguard. Also, I think it makes sense for the woodpecker to hire a detective to look for him, because if Curtis hired the detective and he is the woodpecker, he hires the detective to throw people off his scent. It's like, why would the killer hire someone to find out who he is? But that's the thing. Oftentimes, serial killers like to tease the detectives or the police, whatever, whatever the case may be. And so maybe he hired the detective so he had someone to play a game with. Like he wanted a challenge, he wanted to play a game with somebody. And so that's what he did, he hired the detective to mess with him and to make it more of a challenge, more of a thrill. Now that's the victim's blood, naturally. Someone's footprints. Someone's footprints. A broken clock. Could it be the murder weapon? Nah, I doubt it. Yeah, that's why I think it's Curtis. Nice, right, some condensed milk. I doubt these bricks are the murder weapon. No blood on them. These footprints might be anyone's. No more boots. Maybe left by the killer. Let's see where these footprints go. These footprints might be anyone's. Three bottles, clear, empty. These footprints might be anyone's. Romo Sig Buds. Oh wait, one is thin and mint flavored. That's unusual. Okay, cool. So we found the clue that we were after. There might be something else stuffed in the back though, so let's check. So they said a menthol, or a mint cigarette. That would be, uh, who's that stalker we spoke to? Uh, Fancy Pants, I think, is what he went by. The guy that we spoke to in the tavern? He was smoking minty cigarettes. So it could be him, or that evidence could have been planted here by Curtis. Either way, we need to go back to the stalker base, speak to the detective, and see, uh, see what we can find out. Take a little walk away. Darn, I hope it wasn't Curtis. I was really proud of my theory. Oh, sorry, I really hope it wasn't Fancy Pants. I was really proud of my my Curtis theory. Because he was in a position to get away with the the murders. Also, it would give him 
a way to return to the scene of the crime without being suspected or without it being suspicious because you know he's in charge of the stalker base someone gets murdered he he's obviously gonna go see what's going on and that seems to be another common trait for killers as they want to uh, return to the scene of the crime Alright, Fidel, I need you to come over here in the open so you can actually see these guys. Come on, there we go. Alright, let's do it. Also, I don't think Fancy Pants is associated with any other named NPCs in the stalker base. So if he was having help, I wonder if it's just generic NPCs or if it's actually... Or if he has associates in the stalker base that uh, we talked to already. Probably make this guy my priority. He's the only one that actually has a melee weapon. So let's do that. Get two attacks off instead of one. Uh, that took longer than I think that it should have. But it's still a victory, so I'll take it. Really, the only people that I did not suspect at all were not the uh, woodpecker or the merchants in the stalker base. Because they're not people that you would want to uh, have to kill. Because then you don't have merchants to sell things to in the dead city. So they were the only people that were above suspicion. And there were a couple NPCs we spoke to when we were doing the first investigation, the first part of the investigation, uh, that were a little suspicious, like that really large guy that guards the entrance to the stalker base. He said something that was a little off-putting. Don't remember, don't remember what it was, but he, uh... Whatever it was, it did warrant suspicion.
Alright, I'll take that money off your hands. Thank you. Gosh, these are so expensive. That's fine. I'll just take that off your hands. Also, let me check this guy one more time. He says hello there. At a quick glance, he kind of looks like, um... Ewan McGregor. I wonder if this would be an Obi-Wan reference. Alright, swing by the merchant real fast. Try and clear out my inventory just a smidge. Fifteen hundred. APK, the automatic Kalashnikov pistol, is an experimental prototype that never reached mass production. However, a few models can still be found in the wastes. Takes 9mm, critical chance, plus 2%, 7 to 17 damage. Oh, this looks different too. A modified TT pistol. So an upgraded, has an upgraded uh, pistol grip and a better front sight. This improves your aim. Okay, let's grab both of these, because I haven't seen this before. We have plenty of stuff to barter for it anyway, so we'll trade that and that. So just a little short. Might as well grab the ammunition as well. Come on, there we go. All right, let's do that. And that. All right, and then I want to compare those guns to what Fidel currently has. Oh, so the APK takes nine millimeter. What is his current? So 5 to 12, 3, 4, 2. Yeah, that is a significant upgrade. And it... Oh, the burst? It burst for 6. Hey, that's the highest burst that I've seen. I don't think LMGs burst for 6, do they? Oh, yeah, 7 to 15. Okay. And 5. So it bursts more than the AK-47. And does just slightly less damage. Neat. Okay. And then the TT pistol compared to the baseline. So 451, 452, both 8 to 14. I'll just say that it's better. So am I swapping back to pistols? Because SMG, he only gets the one burst off. So he actually has less chance to crit, I think. It is four shots. I think he was doing better with the pistol. Plus he has more range than with the SMG. At least that's what it seems like. With the SMG, he's constantly running forward. So I'm going to swap him back to this for the 30 caliber. And he has been burning through ammunition very, very quickly. So let's let's do it this way. We'll see how that goes. All right, let's go talk to the detective, see what we can find out. 
Uh, that's the wrong way. Nope, that's the wrong way. Where's the, uh... Oh, all the way back here. I know what I'm doing. You look at the detective who investigates the woodpecker case. He's doing what he always does. Just stands there, mouth open, eyes glassy, mumbling things under his breath. Seems like the idea of making himself think like the elusive criminal is not yet dropped by this private eye. When he notices you, he focuses his eyes on you and nods. Hope you visited the store. Lots of time has passed since the murder. Yeah, I've been there. The only clue you missed was the cigarette butt. Show the slim cigarette butt. The detective checks out the butt while scratching his chin. A rare thing indeed. In this station, only one man smokes such cigs. I think I already spoke to that guy. He smoked thin mint cigs. You're talking about fancy pants, right? Yep, it's him alright. But he's not in the station now, gosh darn it. I walked out to have a breath of fresh air and saw him leave. Darn it. I didn't have a reason to stop him then. Now you think he could be our murderer? I don't know. Anyone could be at this point. But he sure is a suspect. We need to have a talk with him. Uh, what should we do? Just wait for him? No. No. Let me remember something. A detective starts rubbing his head. His gaze is all focused on one spot, and he's whispering something silently. Finally, he turns to you. I remember. Remember he was talking near the entrance to the store before leaving. He didn't enter, but he spoke to a crestfallen stalker called Moth. This guy is always around. Maybe he knows where Fancy Pants is. Please, talk to him, and I will assist you. Uh, why can't you go talk to Moth yourself? Well, see, I'm not even good at speaking to my own family members, and Moth is one heck of a guy. I'm afraid of scaring him off. You would do much better than me. Uh, maybe you're right. Let's go talk to the guy. Let's go. I believe we're very close to solving this case. I hope so. Alright, Moth. Let's have a chat. A stalker who turned into a bum twirls and shakes in place. He straightens himself out and bows to you. A kind person is walking by. It's like the sun shining in my eye. Listen, I wanted to talk to you about Fancy Pants. Fancy Pants? I'm familiar with this person, uh, Baron. Uh, what do you want to know? We want to know where he went. Oh, oh wowee. I don't know anything about that. Nope. What are you talking about? Listen, we're on an important mission. We're looking for a serial killer. Killer, huh? Then talk to Kurt, or Curtis, or one of the other fat cats. I have nothing to do with no killers. We want you specifically, since you know where Fancy Pants went. You're looking for a serial killer. You want to know where Fancy Pants went, and you're talking to me. I don't get it. Respected comrade, I beg of you, please tell us all you know. It is highly important. Fine, fine. You talked me into it, you smooth-talking piece of work, you. Alright, listen here. Fancy Pants wanted to uh, walk into the store and buy something. But then he, like, stopped wanting to do that. See? He shook his head and told me, Ah, Moth, you old fool, you. You have no idea what nightmarish things go on in the dead city. And he smacked me on the back in a friendly way, but so hard I almost fell over and started laughing and saying stuff like, Nobody will ever know. No, they won't. Then his radio came on and he said something into it. He's whispering, but I heard some of it. Yes, I did. He said he's going to be waiting for someone at the old playground. Didn't get why, though. There's your intel, whippersnappers. May it bring you joy. Just don't tell Fancy Pants I snitched on him. We won't tell. Winner's protection will keep you anonymous. At a playground, eh? The detective points out the playground on your map. Meet me there, okay? I'll go in first to check the place out, in case it's an ambush. He's gonna die. Lots of shady business goes on here. Be ready for anything. Ah, the boys are back in town. 
Justice will be served and butts will be kicked. Cool. Alright, Minsk. Let's do it. Alright, let's go to the playground. It seems like Fancy Pants is the killer after all. Or he's going there and he's going to be killed. He's being lured there by the woodpecker. I'm probably reading way too much into it. I will stop and make camp though. I want to be at full health before we confront the woodpecker. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Alright, everybody's at full health. Should be ready to rock and roll and put a stop to a serial killer. That's not going to work. I need to get rid of both of these, I think. Get all the ammunition to hexogen. And take a stimulant. Not happy about it, but... Once we get back to Krasno, we can take care of the, uh, the addiction that we have. In the meantime, I have to sustain and encourage it. You walk into the pre-war playground when the detective appears before you. He looks grim. After checking behind his back, he whispers. Finally. Quiet. Fancy Pants is right there. Look. I'm looking, I'm looking. Yep, there he is. He's waiting for someone or something. The detective shrugs and turns to you. We need to wait and watch his movements. I advise we rush in and arrest him. Why waste time? That's not how the old world KGB did things. We're only a few meters away, but he isn't bothered at all. Be quiet, please. That's the only thing I ask of you. Uh, what will we do now? Care to tell me your plan? Now why is he standing there? He won't even turn to face us. How should I know? He's probably waiting for someone. Let's watch him some more. I'm not ready for action yet. Let's see who shows up. Because he might not be the woodpecker. Suddenly, the detective grabs your shoulder and points at Fancy Pants. The stalker is walking in your direction, smiling. The smile fades, however, when he sees your faces. He must have been waiting for someone else. Um, what are you doing here, guys? <laughs> We're just out for a walk. What's up? Nothing is up. Just minding my own business. Can you take a walk some other place? I have an important meeting over it, over here. Uh, who are you meeting, though? I don't feel like telling. It's personal. No concern of yours. It's a serious situation out here. You have to tell us. Do I have to repeat myself? I'm not telling you crap. You seem a bit nervous. What's to be nervous about? I'm cool as a cucumber, Mac. I just need you to back off a little. Oh, come on, buddy. We won't do anything bad to you. I know, I know. It's just that you're pestering me for no reason. I'm working for Valia Satanovsky, a guy from the looter base. We have business with him, okay? Oh, okay, that would make sense why when we gave him the Morosco case, so Valia is the woodpecker. Uh, what business? Tell me now. I do some freelance work for him. I get stuff and he buys. Comprende? Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, well, well. Give me more details from now on. Cut it out. I'm a free stalker. I don't have to answer your questions. It's a matter of principle. Yeah, I get it, and I support you. 
But see, the cigarette butts found near the place jerky was butchered are the same brand you smoke. Huh. Now I get why you gained up on me. It sure looks suspicious. What makes you think they were my? Or I guess mine. Only you smoke that brand of cigs. It's where you got your nickname. Wow, that's your clue. You think I'm the only one in this whole city who smokes thin, mint-flavored cigs? I get them at the port, and at least ten others buy them at the same time as me. Guys, listen. I know you want to get the woodpecker. Everyone does, including me. But you can't insult an honest guy because of the cigs he smokes. It's absurd even by today's standards. Hmm. Where were you that when uh, the jerky boy was killed? Hmm. Um, yeah. Suddenly a wicked smile erupts on the face of Fancy Pants. Here comes the cavalry. Now you guys are really screwed. What? Another hedgehog helmet. Your former employer from the looter base is flanked by two tough looking mercenaries. He claps his hands as if he had just seen an especially buffoonish clown perform his favorite trick. That clown is you. What do you know? Look who decided to join our little party. Why are you here? Are you the pal Fancy Pants was waiting for? Bullseye. That's exactly it. He was waiting for me and my partners here. Hee <laughs> hee. You just sat there and asked me all those questions. I actually gave you the chance to leave, but no. Your over overactive tongue has become the death of you. It doesn't matter anymore. I'm afraid we have to dispose of the witnesses. To arms, boys. Hold on. What is this all about? We were looking for the woodpecker, not you. The man's curt laugh shows off his yellow teeth. You're in luck. You got even more than you wanted. Not only did you find the infamous woodpecker, you also found the guy who made him into the woodpecker. Without whom, he'd still be some weird nobody called Fancy Pants. I'm his employer, and he is an amazing professional. A gatherer of valuable stuff. A joy to my clients and my organization. You're saying he wasn't a serial killer. Then why did he torture the victims? To increase the quality of the product he was gathering. See, if the victim suffers terrible agony before the product is harvested, it generates more of the chemical compounds that brings happiness to my clients. I get no pleasure from this. It's just my job. Suffering is often a highly valued part of writing poetry, but this is a whole nother level. Hmm. Well, my boy the woodpecker was harvesting may actually augment one's ability to write. I've heard it said this same product governs creativity. And what's this product you're going on about? Ah, I'm referring to the human pineal gland, a pea-sized, fleshy ball located deep inside the brain. This organ is the subject of oh so many legends. They say it gives one creative energy and blissful euphoria, something I'm not going to test since I never use what I sell. It is also rumored to harbor a person's very soul. That's nothing. Some buyers also demand the adrenal gland. Now that's a real high, my friend. Pure adre adrenochrome? It's no joke. Ugh, so this whole operation was to sell a bunch of human organs to drug-addicted cannibals. Oh, come on. Where's the cannibalism? This gland is like five grams of human flesh. The rest is organic chemicals. And who are your clients? The elites who've grown tired of average workaday drugs. Uh, these people are the top dogs, so naturally they're easily bored. People like me and my woodpecker are the final refuge from ennui and gloom. And what's this organization you speak of, old man? The Secret Cartel. You've probably seen our symbol around, and even talked to our postal workers. We're everywhere. As silent as a muted horn, as forgettable as a silly drawing on a waste bin. Don't look at me like that. We're not monsters. We're professional postal workers who believe that all letters and packages must be delivered, no matter what they are. Drawing your horns all over the place is childish. And that says something coming from me. The signs warn our competitors not to trespass on our turf. Believe you me, compared to most of them, we're angels. We never use the stuff we move. We never kill without reason. We never force ourselves into local politics. And the places we don't work in are serviced by much worse folks. Outright criminals. Alright, enough information. Great. It's your time to die, after all. Hope for a miracle. <laughs> I can just... <laughs> I can send the, de uh, the detective under the bus. I can also attack first. Where am I... I wish I could see how far away I am. I can probably take them. They only have 
looks like an AK-47 and maybe an RPK. So let's attack first. You launch to one side and assume a combat stance. Your opponents are stunned at your inhuman speed. Where is he? Wake up, you idiots. Open fire. My turn first. Attack. Oh, okay, we're actually really close. Oh. Oh. Oh! Well... I didn't realize there were nine more enemies here. Okay, um... Maybe I should have taken the strength option and convinced these guys to leave. We'll see how this goes. Well, that was a really nasty grenade throw. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I should have taken the strength option and chased all of his mercenaries away. Yeah. Son of a gun. <laughs> Alright, we'll blow through the dialogue real fast. I thought it was just going to be Fancy Pants, the two mercenaries, and the, uh, Valia. But nope, there were, uh, nine more mercenaries, and they were very well equipped. Just click through all this. I want to make sure I pick the same options I picked last time. Alright, so we're going to pick the strength option. Address the mercenaries. Men, you don't want to die here today. For what? That old fool? Walk away and live. Maybe it's the deadly calm of your voice. Or maybe your rippling muscles. But one of the mercs says dealing with monsters is in his, in his contract. And walks off. The others think about it for a second and come to the same conclusion. The old man isn't quite a pickle. Now you are mine. This will also keep the detective alive, hopefully. I don't know if the quest will fail if he dies or not. I well probably not because the quest oh, I didn't look that last time, I think. Because the quest giver was Curtis. Seriously? The one shot he's gonna get, he's gonna <laughs> shoot Alexander with it. Well, that's that. The woodpecker and his colleagues are dead. Darn it. Exotic drugs, pineal glands. I never expected that. Nobody saw that coming. The whole thing was some kind of messed up conspiracy. The detective is lost in thought and hasn't heard a word you've said. Eventually he finally straightens up and gives you a doubtful look. What? Sorry, I'm still processing what we learned. Why don't we report to Curtis by yourself? I'm quite fascinated by this bizarre organization we've uncovered. I'll not be satisfied until I've completely unraveled the mystery. I started true to grad. Yes. I believe that was Fancy Pants, aka the Woodpecker's hometown. Cool, I wonder if we run across him in the expansion. I thank you for your assistance with the investigation. Hmm. Hmm. I was in quite a pickle before you appeared. The reward is yours and I'll be on my way. Farewell. I hold it. Where are you going? It's too late. He walks away without a backward glance. Okay then. 
Well, that is that. Some more glasses and a nagant. A nagant. I've never learned how to properly say that. Or which way is the proper way to say it. A little disappointed I don't get all the loot from those uh, stalkers, but we don't need the money. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to go and turn this into Curtis, call it an episode, and then off camera we'll head to the Institute Bunker. That's what we'll pick up next episode. See, I did have an, an initial suspicion of Valia when the detective showed up after we gave him the Morosco case. But the corpses weren't dissected, like, it didn't seem like organs had been taken out of them. They just had, like, that small puncture wound, which I guess if they just took out that tiny gland, that's all that was required of them. I wonder if I had high enough attention when we first looked at the, uh, that first body, if that would had hinted at him being a, uh, had organs taken out of him. Walk on by, this place is protected by me. Is that guy new? Curtis spares you a quick look and starts drumming his fingers on the table. Got something to tell me? Speak. Uh, fine. Listen, to everything you know. Tell Curtis about your confrontation with Fancy Pants Woodpecker, which ended in a fight with him and his uh, grizzly associates. Curtis listens to your blood-curling tale and speaks only after you finish. Uh, freaking heck. Drugs made from people. Mystery gangs and cartels. That city became a haven for some crazy crap. Good thing I decided to put more money into hiring guards. Hey, tell me this handler had mercs with him. Uh, what do you think? Did the woodpecker kill alone, or was it a group effort? I believe that even for those bastards, such torture and killing was too much. I think Fancy Pants acted alone. Yes, you're probably right. Probably. Ah, doesn't matter now. Secret Cartel. Gosh darn. What terrible things exist in the world. Curtis sighs again, covers his wary eyes, and rubs the bridge of his nose. What happens to the detective, by the way? I don't see him around. He decided to continue his investigation. A strange yet noble gesture. I'm glad he's okay. Who knows? Maybe he'll even unravel the secrets of that cartel. I doubt it, though. Yeah. Anyway, it's good that we finally know who the killer was. I think the murders will now stop, and I have you to thank for that. And the detective, to some extent. Yeah, true. So how about my reward? Sure. Wait a sec. The man dives under his table, returns to the large medical bag. Here's some meds, some ammo, 3,000 rubles. Don't pull a muscle while lugging that thing around. I'm afraid that's all I have, though. But don't worry. There's enough stuff here to please even the most hard-boiled stalker. Well, thank you. That stuff wouldn't hurt. Take it all. Oof. I'll go check out... I'll go check out what's in inside. Alright, uh, let's see. Let's eat that salted fish. A lot of ammunition. Let's divvy that up among my companions. Three med kits, rubble, stimulants. Okay, cool. Alright, so the woodpecker investigation is done. That's exciting. I started to find the governor. South side of this city. 
Maybe I'll look for them off camera before we do the institute. I'm gonna assume that it's a random encounter and that, and that uh, I can't talk. And that they are not found in some location. So I've explored all the locations. Unless I did miss one. I don't see any other landmarks that stand out. So I don't know. I, I'm i going to assume it's a random encounter, so I'll look for that off camera. Probably on my way to the Institute Bunker. Yeah, because I don't see anything where... anything obvious, anyway, so... Either way, I'm going to call the episode here. Uh, Hopefully we'll pick up in the next one, take on Governor's Gang, and then we can turn that in and then head to the Institute Bunker and uh, proceed with the main quest. But we'll see. Either way, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.